Hello, everybody. So we are doing some oil lamp testing. We had audio issues with our last broadcast, so we need to test audio first. Sorry for that. Test, test, test. Yeah, we seem to be live and we seem to have some audio, so I don't know what happened last time. My, I'm going to chalk it up to one of the connections was bad. So, where are we going? Do we need to have the camera a little bit higher? This is some award-winning photography work here, everybody. You don't just look this on any channel, only on this channel. So, first of all, you notice in the background we have not one but two fire extinguishers. This is just for our own personal testing. Uh, this is a continuation of a customer question about. Uh, wait, we've done some testing. This is our quarter inch around cotton. We had a quarter inch fiberglass. So that was the question. Let's keep this quick. We don't have much time. Let's go ahead and open up the morning glass. We're going to get a little air in here. So we're just going to drop a couple drops of fuel. Now, each of these, each of these is multiple times. If you go back to the other YouTube. So let's grab a tape measure too. And let's see, I want to probably have a little more exposure for this one. So this one in here is a one sixteenth cotton. And it's actually a little too small for this holder. This holder should have a one eighth, but you can see that we just have a little bit older. Although it's gonna see it's gonna say we want to fall back in, which is the problem with using a size too small for a holder. And then let's go ahead and advance that a little bit. So we're not gonna we're just not saying that we're just gonna give it a little more weight to the display. We dry our fingers before we light any fire. And again, this is just for my own personal testing. Do not do this at your own house. Have two fire extinguishers on camera. And I've also done a lot of these videos if you check back over the years. So I'm thoroughly comfortable making my own lamp. So you'll see here that is too much flame. And even this one, you see what they die down back to. Let me test the audio again because uh, that last video was a mess. You can see the audio kind of test, 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 testing the audio. It was interesting. I thought I heard a crackle in there. Okay. I hope the audio is okay for everybody. I'll try to speak close to the microphone. So what do we have going in here? We have, let's go to the tail of the tape. Approximately six and a half inches. In my last video, I started out with eight inches. So that means that the fuel was a little bit lower and there was eight inches between the fuel level and the burning tip. That was too much I found and the flame definitely looked like it was starting. So we are now Approximately six and a half inches and everything is okay. So we're gonna go for a little bit and see. I'm gonna say somewhere past between six and a half and eight inches is too much distance. So when you have an oil candle, you need to make sure you fill enough fuel. Each one is going to be different. The smaller the diameter of the wick, the closer the fuel needs to be to the burning tip. So let's go and we'll check the height on that one. This is the quarter inch round cotton. So let's do a summary real quick before we start. And let's test our audio again. So that's interesting. It might just be you need to be right next to the microphone. 
Yeah, okay, I'm going to have to connect. I have an, a microphone we use for our music work, and maybe I'll just have to connect that up whenever we're doing live stream. Seems like this microphone on this laptop is very sensitive to being any distance away. So let's do a test, test, test real close. Okay, so we're learning that with this laptop, you have to have your mouth pretty close to the laptop, like it's a uh, standard microphone. <laughs> so I will, next one, we'll connect up a, a more professional microphone. I have been getting by, makes me really appreciate that the laptop has some strengths, even though it was a much weaker laptop as far as processing power. So to summarize and make sure I stay close to the microphone here, we have a 3 16 turbo air core, cotton. What does that mean? If you were to snip a fresh slice off the wick and look down, it almost has, a, it basically has a hole in the center, and it's almost like a straw with a very fine hole in the center of the weave. So 3 16 cotton, turbo air core is what I call it. Then we have our 1 16 solid cotton right here. And this one, I have found that you must keep the fuel no no lower than just an inch and a half, two inches. And you go below that, and you will be starving the flame for fuel. So the smaller the wick diameter, the more full the container has to be in relation to the fuel level has to be very close to the flame. Over here, we have a quarter inch round cotton solid inside of a copper straw. So let's go and do a measure on that one. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're going to have to add fuel. That thing's almost empty. Look at that. Complete, complete drainage there. So this is almost seven inches. So we're going to have to actually add some fuel where this is going to start starving. So what are we going to do? Yeah, move that out of the way. So we gave that a little more fuel, and then by a little more fuel, I mean a very, very little more fuel. So that is about a half inch. Let me set that back down, and we'll give you an actual measurement. So I actually only have a little over half inch, maybe three quarter, an inch of fuel in that. And this is about a six inch test tube and then an additional inch and a half or so of copper straw sticking up. So what can we say for sure in our testing? And again, I'm a little paranoid. Let's test the audio again. Audio test one one. It's not perfect. OK, so this laptop definitely needs an external microphone. So, oh, well, everything is a trade off. So we'll make do. I'll try to speak very close to the laptop here. What have we learned? That putting a wick inside of a straw, a metal straw, substantially increases the distance the wick can pull fuel. And why is that? Because in freestanding air over here, you only get the wicking of the wick. If you have your wick inside of a metal straw, you're getting additional wicking action between the wick itself and the wall of the straw. So it's like having two wicks in one if you put it inside of some sort of a metal straw, it would seem. So definitely you can increase the distance between the flame and the fuel level by putting a wick inside of some sort of a metal straw. So that is an interesting thing to know. So I think we're going to wrap it up here in a second. You can see here that the wick is capable of doing quite a bit of pull. That is a tremendous amount of distance between the fuel way down here. This is a six inch test tube. And you even have straw sticking above the six inch test tube. This one, we figured out somewhere before eight inches, but certainly we're at
Right. Six and a half inches. So we have a good six and a half inches at least, which is more than usual. I, there was a website I had found when I was doing research that said six inches was a maximum, and that was with half inch fiberglass. So definitely by putting in a straw, you're substantially increasing the wicking ability of wick. So you can wick more with a straw. So we'll just let them go for another minute or two. I think we'll just make it a short video. Um, I would like to do substantial testing down the road, and I basically want to put together a table for everybody. What is the lowest level you can have the fuel by wick type and by condition, meaning is the wick freestanding in air or is it inside of some sort of a straw? And I won't be able to do the straw test with all of them because not every wick fits this quarter inch fits perfectly inside of this particular straw. So, and then I also wanted to show here in my instructions, I suggest people put some sort of a gravel in the bottom of their bottle. Not only will it create weight, but also all of this area with gravel now you don't have to fill with fuel because what we're finding here is that you're not able to use, you know, let's say this is a six inch reservoir, you're not necessarily gonna be able to pull all the way down to six inches. So rather than just having fuel at the bottom that is never able to be used, you displace all of this distance with rock, glass beads, uh, you can get really creative, you could buy a package of stainless steel nuts and washers, or anyway, you could have a lot of fun with it. You could figure out all kinds of interesting things as long as they don't interact with the fuel, so that would have to be something like rock or stainless steel. Um, that would be about all I would recommend. Uh, so aquarium gravel is very nice. I don't have any right now, but aquarium gravel is basically like this, but much more colorful. And that worked very well at, I did that at Northwest World Reggae Festival, and that looked very nice in uh, clear wine bottles filled most of the way with aquarium gravel and then a half inch wick sticking out of the top. So we'll just let that go for another minute or two. Maybe we will test our audio again because, like I said, I was a little paranoid here. Yeah, I think it's just definitely that anytime I get my head too far away from the microphone on this laptop, you just don't get good sound transmission. So. That's good to know. Next time I will go to the trouble of connecting them a real microphone, and that should be a lot better. But this is definitely a good test. You're able to see, first of all, all of my wick stays lit if properly used. So anytime you look through and there's a review, well, first of all, the ones that are kind of the worst that just I don't understand if you're going to leave a one star, you should go to the respect to leave a verbal reason why you didn't like the product. So one stars with no comments, but especially the one stars with a comment that says it doesn't stay lit. Those most certainly must be because people have something wrong. What could be wrong? You see how far this is and you put your wick into the fuel and the wick fuel will go up to here. And unless you drip a bunch of drops down the top to make it wet from there to wherever the, you know, I should almost do some colored fuel. And then we can see if you just set, that's a great another test. We'll just set wick into colored fuel and we'll see how far the fuel will pull up the wick and where it stops at. And then you'll see that unless your wick is right next to the fuel level, you need to add some extra drops down the top to prime it because what will happen is you'll have the fuel will go up to here and then from there to down there is all completely dry and it just won't do anything. If it's a cotton, it'll just like you're lighting a piece of string on fire that doesn't have any fuel and it'll just burn down and bad things will happen. So looking through the reviews, there's definitely, uh, I want to work very hard on education because I personally had no idea about making oil lamps when I started selling wick. So I started selling wick with no idea how it works because you know everybody lives in a world of LED lights. So only if there's an emergency 
and really in extended emergencies where oil lamps come in because a battery flashlight you know will last you know an hour or two hours maybe a little bit longer but if your power's out for a day or two days you need an oil lamp because otherwise or you need to have a ton of batteries on stock so we'll wrap it up in a minute everybody's going to come back from the park i had a few minutes to uh do some testing and take care of some stuff get work done so wanted to fix the problem with the other video and now i can send this off to the customer so my initial testing was with quarter cotton now i've done the testing with quarter fiberglass and we've proven that quarter fiberglass can be strung through a long distance definitely that's the other issue is fiberglass is kind of it's literally fiberglass it's tiny little fibers that they've managed to weave into a string it's absolutely incredible but if you if you handle it, handle it, handle it over a piece of glass, you'll actually see that it's just a bunch of little glass fibers that they have some sort of process to bind together into a into an actual rope. So I was really impressed that I was able to string this. This is a foot long piece of copper tubing, and I was able to string quarter inch fiberglass through. And so what I did was I strung through a bunch of extra, because what will happen is. I would always cut way extra and have it dangling in the bottom of the bottle, and that way the wick will last longer. I'd like, to, definitely want everybody to get the maximum use out of their wick. So by doing that, eventually, you know, you trim it, trim it, trim it, because what will happen is the top here is going to get uh, impregnated with carbon from the process of burning. It's pulling in a tremendous, the fuel has a tremendous amount of carbon in it, and then the carbon dioxide in the in the air. And you're pulling in 14 parts of air for every one part of fuel. So it leaves behind a bunch of carbon on your wick. Eventually, that'll be so carbonated and fouled with carbon that you'll have to pull it up a little bit and cut it off. And then, then you have fresh, clean fibers that can pull oil again. And then with cotton, it kind of burns down almost into a little piece of charcoal. And eventually, you will have to pull it up slightly and trim it. Although I found I'm actually doing fairly well with just pulling a little additional cotton up and then it kind of burns down and do another bottle of charcoal. So you'll see here we're getting near 200 side down over the time over the length of the video. So what you're seeing is that the fuel level is really dropping almost down to six inches now. You're getting freestanding air that's too much. You must fill your fuel very close to where your burning tip is going to be. So if you're using a wine bottle, you must fill the wine bottle all the way up to the very top of the neck. Because literally in a wine bottle, the only part of the fuel in a wine bottle you're going to use is from the top of the neck down to where the bottle starts to widen out. If you look at most wine bottles, it's a minimum of six inches, and some of them are even nine inches before the bottle begins to widen out. And you think that I only have to fill it up to, let's say, halfway up the wide part of the bottle, but what you're doing is you basically made it way too far for the way to pull fuel. You can see here, we're starting to die out now. The flame was uh, about a quarter inch taller when we first started the video. Yeah, let's do a measurement before we wrap up. We're talking four and a half inches right now. And so what does that tell you is that you have to have more fuel. I don't want to do a short test here. So next video test I will do, we'll do different width types. I want to do one sixteenth fiberglass and probably just basically go through each one and figure out what is the minimum fuel level you must have and anything below that, and it's just not going to stay lit. So I think we'll wrap it up right there. I want to say thank you very much to my customers, and I'm trying to narrow in on uh, when you get any sort of uh, bad feedback, what is the problem? And so I want to eliminate any of it being... A, a oil lamp that has just got a problem like where the fuel level is too low 
or you have a bunch of wick between the fuel level and it's not getting primed, meaning that you have to drip down. I use these little HDPE, I sell these as well. These little HDPE bottles make perfect little dripper bottles for priming wick. So any sort of little bottle or dropper or pipette or something that you can have and just drip a couple drops of fuel, I'd say more than a couple drops, drop a couple drops until you start to see that fuel level rise because then you know it's completely saturated and all the fuel now is going straight to the reservoir. So that would be a good rule of thumb is to always drip enough fuel down the top until you actually see it starting to fill the reservoir. And that lets you know that it's completely filled from top to bottom of your you're using a straw or um, something like that. A lot of, uh, there was one one star review I saw, and I almost want to go through them again. And I'm seeing, you know, some of them are really suspect where they said uh, it's not one eighth, it's one quarter. And, you know, those ones are strange. And I send them back a picture of my or my glass holder with my one eighth wick going through it and I hold a one eighth drill bit over the top of it and just to prove that it's one eighth. Um, so that, that, that could be issues of you look at a hole and you're trying to guess what size of wick needs to go in there. It's just really hard to tell. So unless you have a, a round feeler gauge like a drill bit exactly the same size and you know for sure. And the way wick works when you size it, so if I sell a one eighth inch wick, it actually has to be a little hair over one eighth, so it is actually a little wider than one eighth, but not not three sixteenth and not one quarter. But it must be. This is a one eighth glass hole, and you'll see when I was fiddling with the one sixteenth, it kept on falling all the way right in because it's too small. So for a one eighth to fit in a one eighth hole, it actually has to be a hair over one eighth. So it's a little confusing, but it makes sense that. If you order a one eighth wick, it has to be a hair over an eighth. If you order a quarter inch wick, it actually has to be a hair over a quarter to fit in a quarter inch hole and not fall right into the fuel. So we'll wrap it up there. I want to say thank you very much to all my customers. I really enjoy doing this. I'm actually really having a lot of fun doing these testing videos, and I think they're helpful. And anytime anybody has any problems now, I can direct them to the testing videos so you can hear audio and visual. Uh, help as to, and then also you can see we have all kinds of stainless steel holder, we have a glass holder, we have a copper straw. So my wick works in any kind of holder and any kind of a lamp as long as it's used properly. And there's not very much to it. Make sure your fuel is filled and make sure you've dropped fuel from the top down to where the reservoir is. So drip, 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 you know drip 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 and drop fuel down the top of the wick because otherwise you can have a dry spot and it won't stay lit or if you don't fill your fuel level enough it'll light it'll pull all the fuel down to let's say here and that's as far as it can burn down and, there's, and it runs because the fuel is not drying up far enough and if you don't have a complete wet wick from here to here you won't have capillary action it's a uh, it's a pump and you know I help out at a friend's house and he has a water pump from a canal and it won't pull air if it loses the prime you have to fill it up with water and make sure there's water in the pipe otherwise it can't pull water through air so uh, anybody who has ever pulled water out of a canal or a well or whatever they understand that but most of us don't have the opportunity if I didn't help out at my friend's house when he goes on vacation I wouldn't have the opportunity to learn how a water pump actually works so anyway it's basically a, a water pump but instead it's a fuel pump and it's not even an active pump it's a passive pump which means it has substantial limits and so if you're within a couple inches you're good if you're in a straw you can be within a lot of inches let's do one last measure before we wrap it up we still don't have enough good flame. So we are now at seven inches. So we have really narrowed it in. So now between seven and eight inches is where this is going to start to fill. And if you're watching the flame, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's able to pull less and less fuel until eventually the flame will just flip around because it can't pull fuel that far.
I mean, this is a that's a lot. So anyway, I think we're gonna wrap it up right there. We're showing that the wick works. Uh, here again, you see this is now starting to start because it's a one sixteen. So it's pulling, pulling, pulling. So I think the next one we'll do is we'll do a testing video. You see that's now completely empty again. So it's pulled all the fuel out, and now what's going to happen is it's going to pull this last couple of drops. It'll use the fuel up the wick, and then it's just going to go out. So they all work. The smaller the wick, and especially when you're in the air, you can only pull a couple of inches, and that's just the way it is. So we'll leave it at that. If you have a wick inside of a straw, this is one sixteen. One quarter, you can see what a difference putting inside of the straw makes. Quarter being four times thicker with extra ability to pull fuel versus one sixteenth. So, this is a really good illustration of that. Also, you know what happens with our wick, so uh, that's the maybe the problem it is actually is the wick going back in the hole. So, maybe we'll do another testing video and we'll make sure we use, we'll swap this out for one eighth cotton in that video. So, We'll wrap it up here. I like to do these long testing videos so that you can see they work. And if you're watching the video and it slowly starts to not work. For example, on this one, the wick is still on the inside of the hole. On this one, we are reaching the maximum distance. Look how low the fuel is in relation. This is not a very thick wick, and it's also just uh, in freestanding air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll wrap it up. I'll just keep on rambling otherwise, which I've already done plenty of. Everybody have a good rest of the weekend, and thank you very much.